Do you want to start selling your crafts online but you're not sure which one you should be selling? In this video, I'm going to help you figure out with a full framework what products have the best chances to getting you sales so you can build a successful handmade shop. Let's dive in. I'm Deb, I'm the founder of tizit.co, a website where I help you start and grow a successful handmade shop. Today, I want to help you pick what products to sell online because maybe you're multi-passionate and you can create all sorts of different awesome crafts and handmade products from jewelry to knitting, some macrame, maybe you do some paintings and pottery as well, and maybe some more. But unfortunately, you can't sell everything and anything you make. You need to niche down so your shop is cohesive and so people landing on your, the homepage of your shop know what your shop is about. That's going to be crucial to make sales. Having too many different types of products that have nothing to do with each other is a sure way to fail and to suffer from the dreaded dollar stigma store. And I have a full video about what I call the dollar stigma store on my channel, which I will link below this video so you can watch it when you're done watching this one. So the real question is, how do you decide? How do you pick what you should sell? And in this video, I'm going to give you a framework for that. I also actually have a free download uh, workbook that you can grab just below the video. I'll add the link as well so that you don't need to take note and you can really just watch the video, but then print that workbook and do the work um, after. So you can take more time to actually do the research and use the tools that I'm about to recommend to you. And the way we're going to do this today is in two parts. And the reason for that is because there is two key ingredients to selling handmade products online and doing it successfully so that you can actually make money from it. The first ingredient is that people need to buy what you make. And I know that sounds a little bit obvious, but it's crucial, right? And what this means is that we need to make sure that there is a demand for the particular product that you're thinking of selling. And we'll cover that to make sure that that's the case. And we'll also talk about trends and how to leverage them to your advantage. And the second ingredient is that you need to be able to make a profit from those products. And again, it sounds a little bit like da Deb, that sounds kind of like obvious, but some products are easier to profit from and to scale than others if you don't want to be working 100 hours a week, which we don't want you to do. So that's the two main things that we're going to be considering today. And that's why we're going to do, to do sorry, this video in two parts. Let's go. Starting with part one of a little decision framework here, and we're going to look at your market and the demand for the products that you're considering selling. The questions we want to answer is what are people actually buying and is this thing going to sell? And the first step to doing that is gauging interest. And what we really want to understand here is are people even interested in this type of products? Are they searching for it when they're online? Because if no one is searching for it, if no one is looking for it, it's going to be very hard to get enough traffic to your shop that you can actually make a sustainable income from it. Now, a few practical tools to help you decide on whether there's interest for that product or not. And I've list all of them in your workbook again that you can download below this video. So make sure to download that. The first tool that I uh, want to mention is the Google Keyword Planner tool. And this is a free tool that Google offers. You can go in, type in a few keywords uh, around your product and what you're thinking of creating and selling and see how many people are actually searching for that online each month. And you'll quickly see if there is effectively a demand because people are looking for it or if it's really not something that interests people that much. You can do the same thing if you're thinking about opening up an Etsy store to see what the Etsy demand is like. Go and use some tool like Marmalade or eRank and do the same thing. They have free trial and again, the links are in the workbook below this video. Um, and you can really just input keywords, type in the type of products that you're considering creating and seeing how many people are searching for it, if people are engaging with this type of products to really see if there is interest around it. And then the last thing I like to do is Instagram and literally just go on Instagram and try to find keywords and hashtags around that product. So if you're selling something like uh, a macrame wall hanging, you might want to type in a hashtag like hashtag uh, wall decor, wall hanging, macrame, and see 
how many people are using this on their pictures and if it's something that seems to be of interest or if it's a bit hard to get um, higher numbers of images and engagement on those type of pictures. Now step two is looking at the competition. And what we wanna know here is, are there any competitors in this market, in this niche for the type of product that I'm thinking of selling? If yes, it's a good thing. Do they seem to be doing okay? Are they making sales? Is the next thing you wanna ask yourself. If so, it's a good thing. And I know most people fear competition and yet, yeah, Fair enough, it's a scary thing because we're thinking, how am I going to stand out? But the truth is it's actually a good thing because it's really someone else that's tested the waters for you and that's able to say, hey, yeah, there's a market for this. I'm doing quite well. So don't be afraid of competition. If there is competition, there is a demand for the product that you're thinking of selling. If there is no competition, it's most likely a sign that there's no demand for that type of product rather than a sign of you having a stroke of genius and inventing something that no one thought of before. Okay, step three is considering trends. And that's a big one. So we really need to understand this and what it means. The truth is that most category of handmade products that you're most likely considering selling are never really going to go out of fashion. People are always going to buy ceramics and pottery. They're always going to buy artwork to decorate their home they're, and printables. They're always going to wear socks and t-shirts and knits and the list goes on. What's important is less so the category of products that you want to make, but what you're going to make them look like. So if you're asking yourself, should I sell mugs or should I sell baby socks? Honestly, the answer is it depends what you're going to make each of them look like. So I wouldn't worry about the trends in terms of like the category of products. There's never a year where people buy more socks or more pottery or more, you know, it doesn't really happen this way. What I would look into is the trends in terms of colors. Is green trending? Is purple uh, the next thing this spring? What kind of patterns are trending? Are we doing floors this summer or are we going polka dots? What textures and material and fabrics are seem to be doing quite well at the moment? Is velvet in or out? Do people want more vegan leather option? Things like that. And also themes. So sometimes it's unicorns and then the next year we see a lot of, uh, you know, I think at the moment it's all about the llamas, yamas. I, don't, I really don't know how to pronounce that you know, pirates, whatever themes are trending at the moment. That's the type of trends that you want to be looking into and understanding so that when you create your products, you can integrate that inside your product collection. And I've included tools to help you do that in the workbook just below this video so that you can go on to websites that will help you figure out what kind of trends are going on this year and this seasons, what kind of color uh, you should be using. And even websites like Etsy have freely available uh, forecasts on trends and reports on trends that you can access really easily. For example, here I'm looking at the top trends to watch for 2019. We're seeing burnt orange as a color that's trending. We're seeing maximalism as a trend. Preserved petals seem to be doing well. Southwestern styles is doing really well. And that's across jewelry, that's across home decor, that's across pottery, it's across prints. So it doesn't, again, matter the category, it's more about the style of the products themselves. Sloth seem to be doing well apparently, which is really cute. And here to stay, 70s and 90s style. So again, worry less about the category of products and more about what you're going to make those products look like. Moving on to part two, where we're going to actually consider in more details the product that you are thinking of creating and selling. And the questions we want to answer here are which products are the most profitable and which products are easier to scale. Now there is no products that is a bad idea to sell online, but there are some products that you will be able to sell at a higher profit margin and that will allow you to scale your business faster without working hours and hours and hours. So this is the type of stuff that we're going to cover now. And the first step, actually a couple of personal questions. And the first one is, 
are you any good at it? As in, are you good enough at it to sell this product, to sell this craft professionally? And this question, I ask it for two reasons. Number one is because if you want to make money from it, you need to be able to offer a product that's good quality. And so we want to make sure, because I know, for example, if I was to make, I can make a little wallet, sure, but three months from now, all the stitches would fall apart for sure. And so it wouldn't really be sustainable as a business. So we really want to make sure that you know your craft well enough to dive in. I'm sure that if you're watching this video, that's the case, but I felt it was important to remind you of that. And then the second side of this question is because the quicker you are at creating that product, the higher profit margin you're going to make because it will take you less time. And time is something that comes into the pricing equation as you know the labor cost. So that's important as well that you're not too slow when you're creating those products. And then, and that's even more personal, are you happy to focus exclusively on that category of product? If you're thinking about doing pottery, is this something that you're really passionate about because you're going to create and make a lot of products. And so you want to be sure that you're picking something that you enjoy doing and that's actually making you happy. Again, I feel like I'm stating the obvious, but there's no sustainable business if you can't do it for the long term because you don't enjoy it. Step two in the second part is what I call the decision guidelines. And this is the very last step in this video. So congratulations for sticking with me. I know this was a video that's a little bit longer than what I usually do, but it's an important decision. So I thought it was important to walk you through the entire process. And what we're doing here is really asking yourself if you're still stuck, not sure if you want to sell knits or if you want to sell pottery is really asking what category of product is easier to profit from and easier to scale if that's what you want to do. And so the first thing is, is it reproducible? And what I mean by that is that although you can sell one of a kind items online, it is much harder to sell uh, a lot of them and to scale a business with OOAK product, one of a kind product, than it is with ready to ship products that are easily reproducible. So you want to ask yourself that question. Again, it's not, you know, necessarily a bad thing. If you want to sell one of a kind product, it's possible, but it's something to keep in mind that it's not as easy. The second thing is, is it time consuming? Is it labor intensive? And the reason for that is that products that take hours and hours to make, are going to be harder to sell because they will come at a higher price point. Again, absolutely not a red flag, but something to consider. Third is, can you easily offer up sales and down sales and build collection in this category of product? So if I'm looking at selling pottery, I can sell plates, I can sell mugs, I can sell bowls, I can sell jugs and all types of things that if someone loves this particular pattern on this mug, they might also like the plate and therefore buy several things rather than just one, which means bigger order and again, more profit. So it's always interesting to start thinking already about the type of collections that you would be able to build uh, within this category of product. Fourth point is the size and the weight of your item. And again, it's not necessarily a red flag, but it is easier and cheaper to ship something like a postcard in the mail than it is uh, to send a wooden chair to a customer. Fifth point is, can you get repeat customers easily? Now, some industries do really well without getting repeat customers. Wedding rings, hopefully no one is going to come back for a second and a third and a fourth wedding rings. And it's an industry that's thriving. But generally speaking, it's good if you can find a category of product and a niche where people would come back to your store for more because they loved what they purchased from you so much that they would come back from another one. So a good example for that is, you know, lip balms and things like that, because if I like that lip balm, it was great for my lips. It smelled amazing. I'm most likely going to run out of it and come back to you for another one because I liked it so much. And the last element is thinking about the seasons and the times of the year and really asking yourself if this item going to be easy to sell only in the winter 
and then I might struggle a little bit for sales during the summer and spring seasons or is it something that people are looking for at any time during the year because of course that's better. Now it doesn't mean that you can't sell a product like a neat that only sells in the winter because there's actually countries like mine here in Australia where, where you guys in the States are in the winter, we're in the summer and vice versa so you can always find a market for this type of product but it is easier to sell a product that's uh, being searched for and that people want to buy any time of the year. And phew, that's it my friend. Um, this was quite a bit of a video, which is why I've got a special download for you that you can download that will walk you through all those steps again on paper so you can print it with all the tools that you need to do the research uh, linked inside of it. So make sure that you download this before you forget. It's just a link below the video. And thank you for watching. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. I come up with a new video every Tuesday to help you start and grow a profitable and successful handmade shop. And thank you. I will see you next Tuesday. Bye bye.